Sorry for missing yesterday's episode, you know on Tuesday I exercised my civic duty of voting, and then on Wednesday I was forced into my civic duty of being a juror. The government giveth and the government forceth. But I'm sure nothing of consequence happened yesterday, so let's just focus on today. Hey, wait, why is my desk covered in post-it notes? What are all these missed messages and emails? Oh! Well, welcome again to Crypto Espresso, your teeny tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines. I'm your host, Andrew, and... Oh, maybe it's good I missed yesterday. First up, Binance has announced that it will no longer pursue plans to acquire FTX. What? That, wait, that happened yesterday? Oh my god. The world's biggest exchange said the decision followed due diligence and news reports regarding mishandled customer funds. A Binance spokesperson said the issues facing FTX are beyond our control or ability to help. This came a day after Binance CEO CZ said a non-binding letter of intent had been signed to explore the deal. The crypto markets slid even further on the news, with Bitcoin plummeting to new depths of $15,682 as investors panicked. But it's FTX's FTT token that suffered the most. It hit lows of $2 late on Wednesday and has fallen by 42% over the past 24 hours. Last night, CZ tweeted, Sad day. Tried. But crying emoji. According to Bloomberg, Sam Bankman-Fried has told FTX.com investors that the exchange is teetering on the brink of bankruptcy unless it secures an urgent cash injection. After Binance pulled out of the acquisition deal, the embattled CEO warned FTX has a shortfall of up to $8 billion and needs $4 billion to stay solvent. On a call with investors, SBF admitted, I fudged up. Well, he used more colorful language than that, but you know, I'm not going to say it, so use your imagination. His exchange has now suspended registrations for new users and withdrawals remain suspended for current customers. Several high-profile crypto Twitter personalities have confirmed that they are affected. Tron founder Justin Sun has also revealed that he is putting together a solution together with FTX to initiate a pathway forward, but it's unclear what this would involve. Also, according to Reuters, Alameda Research, SBF's trading firm and FTX's sister company, suffered a series of losses from deals in May and June of this year. It's alleged Bankman Freed transferred at least $4 billion in FTX funds to prop up Alameda, including customer deposits. Reuters goes on to claim that other FTX executives were not told about this transfer. Last week's Coindesk report appeared to lift the lid on Alameda's finances and revealed that much of the $14.6 billion on its books consisted of FTT, FTX's native token. This, when combined with the revelation that Binance intended to offload $580 million in FTT tokens because of recent revelations, led to a rush of withdrawals from FTX that totaled $6 billion in just 72 hours. But enough talk about crypto exchange collapses, let's look at how the metaverse is doing. Well, Meta has announced that it's cutting 11,000 jobs in what Mark Zuckerberg has described as some of the most difficult changes made in the company's history. The tech giant, which owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, is reducing its overall workforce by 13% and taking other steps to become a leaner and more efficient company. In a statement, Zuckerberg confirmed that jobs will be cut in its struggling metaverse division, Reality Labs, as well as across the company's family of apps. To put these job cuts into context, Twitter lost about 3,750 staff when it halved its headcount last week, meaning Meta's reduction is far more drastic in terms of the number of people affected. And finally, in Maybe slightly more lighthearted news, Elon Musk has vowed to bring power to the people by opening verified check marks to everyone through Twitter Blue subscriptions. But as many predicted, it's not going well so far, with parody accounts now getting verified. One of the profiles with a blue tick is in the name of former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, with a tweet warning, it's very much a moderation failure that this account is still active. Another quipped, if I was smart enough, I'd use my blue tick account to attempt to scan y'all out of crypto or NFTs or something. Other accounts that have been awarded blue ticks include Nintendo of America, where it proudly displays Mario giving the middle finger to followers. Well, everything seems to be on fire today, but let's try to focus on the good here. I got nothing. But you can make my day good by liking this video, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and clicking on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. Did anything good happen to you yesterday or today? Hey, let's make those comments a positive place by sharing below, because I read those comments and I might just shout out my favorite in the next episode. I had a pretty good burrito bowl at lunch, so yeah, let's go with that for me. Also a dynamo of positivity, Alex. Ask Alex in that description below for more info on our headlines or crypto in general. Alex is also a great resource for all things Web3 and the metaverse, and that does it for today. My world's on fire, how about yours? That's not how I like it, but I wanted to make a Smash Mouth reference. Anyway, 
Again, I've been your host, Andrew. These have been your headlines, and we'll see you tomorrow. Chin up.